I, I was on a an interview with my dear friend Ben Azadi today, and we were talking about why the body does what it does when we fast. And um, this is what I want you, you know, a lot of the discussion that we're having right now um, is really about you going inward in this experience um, to, to help yourself. And um, one of the things that I, where I really got into um, fasting was when I saw the science, where my brain went was like, why would the body do that? Like I told you all that one of the, my first door in, I think I told you all, my first door in to understanding fasting was Dr. Osumi's work. He won the Nobel Prize in 2016 for medicine and physiology uh, for, the, for the term autophagy, that when the body goes without food, it goes into the state of autophagy. And, and literally when I saw that, my brain was like, okay, why would the body do that? Why? Does the body repair itself without food? I thought prior to that, I was like, I thought the body would break down more, but there must be some kind of internal mechanism, repair mechanism that I don't know about, but the body knows. So I took that one study and I started to dive into the longer length fast and look at, well, what does it do at different levels, hours of fasting? And so um, when I did, um, I started to see, have an even deeper appreciation of how intelligent our body is built to be. And I want, you, many of you have heard me on videos talk about the six different length fasts. I, I obviously put them in the book, but I now want to give them, say them to you through the lens of why your body does this. Because I think if you think about it from the perspective of your body, um, then you will understand that miracles are happening in you right now. And miracles can feel painful, but their healing can feel painful. And yet your body can still be doing something miraculous that's going to make tomorrow and the next day and the next day even better. So this will help you because I know that we are a worldwide audience. And so I don't know what, what hour fast you're in, but I want to be able to um, help you sort of get a glimmer into what your body is, is doing. Now, before I do that, what I also want you to understand is that there is a relationship between your mind and your body. And so we tend to just walk around thinking thoughts and we don't like think like, oh, there's like this, the, there's my body speaking to me and I'm speaking to my body, that there's this communication that's happening back and forth from the body. We have these two energy systems. I've talked about this before. In order for you to switch over into your fat burning energy system, the sugar burner energy system is going to need to come down. And this is really, really important because um, if it doesn't come down, then you can't switch over. A lot of the bad fats, when we're having obesogens, which are toxins that make us insulin resistant, our blood sugar is climbing, 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 climbing. And then one day we decide we're going to start fasting. And what happens is that blood sugar has a long drop to go before your, your body will switch over into this fat burning state. If that's you, it may actually take you up to 12 hours, maybe even 13, maybe even more to switch over. I've seen that happen over and over again. All that means is that this system got mucked up. And so your body's having trouble regulating it, getting that glucose down enough to be able to switch over into fat burning. So the more insulin resistant you are, the more toxic you are, the longer it's going to take you to switch over. So one, watch your ketones and see how you're switching over. When you get to 0.5, you have started to switch over. That You're now moving into what we call nutritional ketosis. So, and that's a beautiful place to be. 
So know that that's a really interesting uh, indicator for you. Let's say it takes you 20 hours to switch over. Um, what I want you to know is that you've got some work to clean this system up. So when you come out of your fast this fast, I want you to work on cleaning this up with those food choices that I mentioned. And I want you to practice going in and out of different length fasts because that's going to make it easier for you. So, so that can be an indicator for you. Over time, what should be happening is your glucose should be going down and your ketones should be going up. So you should be able to see that switch happening. The first day, if that's not happening for you, know that this system needs to be cleaned up. Okay, the other thing um, that I will tell you is that, and this was something a little behind the scenes in the book, that how long does it take to switch over? The science says it's as little as eight hours, that at eight hours of no food, the body's starting to make this switch. So for those of you that want to move in and out of ketosis a little bit more, you want to lose weight a little bit quicker, keep your sugar levels low. This is why pairing fasting with the keto diet moves you over much quicker. If all I'm eating all day long is meat and vegetables and fat, then I'm going to be able to switch over really easily into and quickly. It may be eight hours before I switch over. So this switch is going to take everybody a little different time. But once you get some, some rhythm with it, you're going to find that it's pretty quick to switch over. So I just really want to, I want to, to, to mention that. Um, and your sugar going up. I just wanted to mention that as well. That is a beautiful thing. That is your stored sugar coming out. Your, your intelligent body is saying to you, okay, no sugar's coming in. I, we haven't eaten in a while. She, she doesn't seem to be responding to my hunger cues. So I think I stored some sugar somewhere. Let me go find that and release that. So if you have a monitor, if you're doing a continuous glucose monitor, it may surprise you to see that there are spikes in, um, in blood sugar. Um, and that's just stored sugar coming out. And it's a great thing. I've been crazy busy, um, over the last couple of days. I don't know where it went, but I'm about to put my CGM on tonight. I meant to put it on yesterday, my NutriSense. So, Okay, I got to interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called a beginner's guide to a fasting lifestyle. And all you've got to do is click here and you can jump right in. Um, I'm going to do that. And a lot of times I, I, I do it at least twice a year. I put for a month, I put one of these on. And the reason is because I want to know how much stored sugar I have. So I just want to make sure that I look at two in the morning how much, what's being released at two in the morning, because that's when the liver dumps and what happens when I'm in a fasted state. Am I seeing glucose going up? That, that's, those are two ways we can look at stored sugar. The other way you can look at stored sugar is know your hemoglobin A1C and your hemoglobin A1C can tell you, um, you know, exactly um, what, what's going on with what the, something called glycation. If your hemoglobin A1C is over five, you've got glucose molecules gooking up your red blood cells that are trying to deliver oxygen to your body. So um, if you are, um, if that's you, then more fasting, more work on your food, you'll be able to change that. Um, but otherwise, those are some of the measurements I look at. Okay, now at, at about 12 hours, so it takes about eight hours for the body to switch over, but that eight hours isn't giving you ketones yet. It's just moving you slowly to fat burning. At about 12 hours, you're going to start to see the presence of ketones. And the more you do this, the quicker those ketones are going to come. So this is why if you have a meter, I want you to watch it right now so that you can sort of see where that's happening for you, where you're switching over. Um, at 12 hours, what your intelligent body does is it says, okay, Food's not coming. So I need to go find food. So what chemicals, what neurochemicals right now are going to be the most beneficial for me to go find food? Now, remember, your body thinks that it's still back in the cave person primal days. So when it decides to give you these neurochemical uh, upgrades, 
it's not doing, it doesn't, it doesn't know that you could just walk to your refrigerator and open it up. This is what's so beautiful. We're tapping into this ancestral primal part of your body. And so at 12 hours, it starts with ketones and ketones go up into the brain and turn, turn hunger off. Amazing. That's a, that is incredible. Let's get that hunger turned off, which is why if you're a day into this and you're still hungry, just hang in there. The hunger starts to change. I promise you. On day two, the hunger really shifts. So, but what your body's trying to do right now is it's testing you. It's like, okay, she's not going to get food. I'm going to give her a little bit of ketones um, to see if that'll motivate her. But maybe if that doesn't work, I'll give her some more ketones. So that's the dilemma that the body has right now. The second thing that your body, chemical your body's producing at, as, at this 12, 13 hour level is it gives you growth hormone. And growth hormone is the anti-aging hormone and you do not get any more of it after 30. You get it in spades when you're little because you need that hormone to grow. And it also speeds your metabolism up because that's what its job is to help you grow and help you um, move and um, and it it will and it'll speed the metabolism up so that every single process in your body can work more efficiently. I gotta ask you this question. This is like you and I get very similar questions throughout our week. But this one I think is really good because I'm curious your answer. How often do you check your ketone levels? Me personally, uh, I don't check them at all anymore um, just because I kind of have an intuition uh, just doing this for several years since 2013 keto that I'm in ketosis versus I'm not in ketosis. But for the person who wants to know how often should they check, uh, in the beginning, I do see the value in checking your glucose and ketones, all right? The first seven right. to 14 days, are you actually in ketosis? Let's verify that. There's three different ways to test ketones and a lot of people kind of get this mixed up because there's uh, three different types of ketones. So it makes sense. So you have beta hydroxybutyrate, which is in the blood. And then you have acetone, which the breath expels. And then you have acetoacetate where the urine expels that. And mm -hmm. a lot of people, Mindy, they go for the urine strips because it's the cheapest option. It's on Amazon, the urine strips, but that's not going to be the best measure to know whether or not you're actually in ketosis. And the reason is this, uh, when you are actually becoming more efficient and your cells are actually using those ketones, it's not going to spill out in the, year, in the urine. So it could give you a lot of false negatives and you could beat yourself up and think you're not doing things right and you know drop your carbs some more. But in reality, you could just be using those ketones so efficiently that it's not going to show up in the urine. So I would not recommend urine strips. Now, breath meters over the years have had their problems. They've been hit or miss. There is a yeah, good device have. that I like um, called oh. Biosense that does okay. a really good job and they give you an ACE score and you could correlate that score to blood measurement. So I do like them and you don't have to prick your fingers, but the gold standard still is to this day, uh, blood ketones. And the cool thing about using a blood ketone device is that they typically give you glucose and ketones and it's good to get both. So beta hydroxybutyrate, if you're hitting 0.5 or higher on that blood ketone reading, you're in ketosis. And the goal is not more ketones. I know you get this all the time, Mindy. How do I get my I, ketones? I know. More over is better. That's more our is not culture. Better. Just, just like um, <laughs> glucose is another energy source, but mm. more, higher glucose is not the goal. It's optimal glucose. Same thing with ketones. So for me, my personal sweet spot and for a lot of my Keto Camp Academy students, for them to feel really good is somewhere around 0 0.8 to 2.8 uh, beta hydroxybutyrate. That's a finger prick. So how often should you test? Definitely the first two weeks, just to verify that. I like testing about an hour after waking up and then also an hour or two hours after eating a meal to see if that meal kicked you out, ketosis or not. You might have a food sensitivity. So those are the times that, that I test. Now, you don't have to do this for months and years. You could do this maybe for like a month or two, kind of get a good idea, good gauge on where you are with your routine. Uh, but for me, I've done it so long that I don't, I don't really test anymore. What about you, Mindy? Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's, you, you really described it well, because I, all the testing around ketones and the chasing ketones, um, has become quite a thing. 
And if like, if we're not going to count calories, then let me count my blood sugar. Let me count my, my keto or uh, my ketones. If I'm not going to be looking at the scale, then I want to know how deep into ketosis I am. Cause that's a sign of fat burning. And I don't believe that it works. It's not a one-to-one -one like that. It's not like you can swap out those old behaviors for these new ones where I think those meters are really helpful is in the beginning. Uh, when you're trying to understand, can you get into ketosis? What does ketosis feel like? Because to your point, that's exactly me. Like, I, you know, I can feel a click and then I get my brain goes, whoop, okay, I'm in ketosis. And usually they're right before the click is a, oh, I'm hungry. Do I want to break my fast? What am I going to do? And sort of thinking about how the day is going to unfold. And in the half hour that I'm thinking about it, my body switches over and now I'm into ketosis and I'm not hungry anymore. So I think that's ultimately where we want to get everybody to. We don't want to get this obsessive rigidity around chasing ketones. Um, the other interesting, and this is brand new, Ben, I haven't even told you this. You're going to, you're going to love this. I've been really watching, um, how the menstrual cycle affects blood sugar and ketones. Mm -hmm. And the two times that women really need to, to change their, uh, fasting length and, and sometimes come out of ketosis is at ovulation and the week before a woman's cycle. Well, we know we've been saying this for the last couple years that you're more insulin resistant the week before your cycle. And I will tell you that is a thousand percent true. When I watch a woman with her blood sugar reader, you can see that naturally the same food she ate earlier in the month is causing her blood sugar to spike because her body is wanting her to make more uh, progesterone. So it needs that glucose. Isn't so that amazing? The innate crazy? intelligence. Like we literally see the same meal at different times of the cycle affect a woman differently based off wow. the hormone. Right? Super cool. And then, and then the second thing I've been really like diving into is ovulation. Because we've been saying keeping going keto and ovulation, fasting longer in ovulation is not horrible. But I have to say now after watching the this glucose trend in women – that one of the ways you know that you need to step out of ketosis during ovulation is that if your body is either struggling to get into ketosis um, or you're feeling horrible in ketosis, because that means we've got too much detox reaction happening with, with that uh, time of, of an influx of hormones. So I, I've been thinking about how we can really use glucose and ketones to understand estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone because we don't have a meter for that yet. Yeah. Yet. Yet. Mindy's working on it. <laughs> I'm gonna, I am going to find somebody who can do that for me. I am on that hunt. That's super that interesting? interesting. Yeah. That interesting? There's oh so many intricacies. And uh, the more we learn, it's like the more we could apply this. And um, yeah. the innate intelligence, you know, you want to go in the rhythm of the innate intelligence is exactly That's what you're right. speaking about, you know, work yeah. with your body, not against it. So yeah. don't, don't fight your innate intelligence. If you're feeling awful during ov ovulation and you're doing ketosis and longer fast, try something else and see if that works for you to your point. Maybe. Right. Yeah. So I think that's where we'll start to see after you do it in the beginning. I think we'll start, um, stay tuned because as I experiment with these theories a little more with women, um, I think we can start to use our ketone reader to tell us what hormone's coming in. And then we can change our lifestyle to, to, to suit that hormone. That'll That's be cool. cool. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. Okay. I have another okay. fasting Ooh. question for you, Mindy. Okay. So, yeah, go for it. I know you're struggling to lose weight. It may be your fasting length. So in this video, I'm going to show you the perfect fasting length to unstick weight loss. In fact, it's such an incredible tool for weight loss. I think you should start with fasting before you change your food to be able to get into that door in for losing weight.